Former Congressman Chris Collins sentenced to 26 months in federal prison today after pleading guilty to an insider trading scheme. NBC News investigative correspondent Tom Winter joins me now. And Tom, take us back to, to where this began. It was on the White House lawn at a congressional picnic. But what was he accused of? What was he convicted of well, uh, and sentenced to today? Yeah, sure, David. You've set the scene perfectly. What happened was that uh, Chris Collins was on the board of a pharmaceutical company. And obviously, pharmaceutical companies, they go through drug trials. They want to see uh, if whatever drug they're developing actually works on patients or actually will work in tests. And when Chris Collins was on the White House lawn and part of a congressional picnic, as you said, <clears throat> excuse me, he got a phone call saying the trial happened and it went bad. Mm -hmm. And basically this was going to be really bad inf news for the company. And once the news became public, the shares would plummet, which is what they eventually did. But there was going to be a hold on his shares. His shares were being held overseas where the company was located, but not on his son's shares. So for the next couple of days, it would not be known to the rest of us uh, that this trial had gone, uh, gone poorly for the company picks up the phone, he calls his son, and he also had his uh, his future in-laws uh, actually own shares in this company as well, calls his son and he says, you got to start dumping the stock. Um, <clears throat> His son, uh, his son, as well as those in-laws, uh, were also charged in the scheme. Um, not a good moment for the congressman. Uh, a term of 26 months in prison. He's going to serve two terms concurrently here. How right. in line is this with what prosecutors want and what's usually uh, the sentence in something like this? The judge kind of split the middle here. So basically, prosecutors wanted almost five years uh, for what he did. They asked for the upper end of the guideline range, so, so somewhere certainly north of four years. Uh, he's going to do a little over two years. And, uh, and basically, prosecutors said, look, not only did he was involved in this insider trading scheme. He pleaded guilty to it, but also 10 months later when the FBI knocked on his door, he proceeded to lie to federal agents. So they had some real concerns about this type of behavior. And they also don't want there to uh, seem like there's two justice systems, particularly for somebody who, as they kept repeating, is somebody who not only broke the law, but he was a person who wrote laws to begin with. So really somebody who, who absolutely should have known better. Do we know where he's headed? I know he has designs on going to Pensacola. Uh, his attorney said that's where he'd like to serve this time, if he it, could. And, and that's what it appears the judge is going to recommend. So uh, today the judge had handed down the sentence. Judge Broderick uh, told the court essentially they had asked for this Pensacola prison camp, uh, not exactly maximum security prison. Uh, so uh, so basically, uh, it sounds like the judge is going to advocate for him uh, to go there, and that's where he'll likely serve his time. He moved to Florida uh, after uh, leaving the, uh, the Buffalo area. Um, he was one of the first, if not the first, to endorse Donald Trump when he was running for president. Has the president weighed in on this whole process, on the trial and on the sentencing? We haven't really heard much from the president at all outside of when he was first indicted. Uh, so we haven't heard anything recently reported outside of court today. I was there. Uh, a reporter from Bloomberg asked him, are you going to seek a pardon? Uh, he kind of gave a quick dismissal look to, to the group of us that were there. Um, so that we really haven't heard much from the president at all. I mean, the evidence here was incredibly strong. There were people that uh, had provided information. And just the electronic trading records in and of themselves are so damning. I mean, the records that are kept when you make a trade online, um, the amount of detail in those records is very strong. But when you make a trade in a stock as thinly trade as this mm -hmm. innate therapeutics was, it just sticks out like such a sore thumb to investigators. Um, there was really no way out of this for Collins. Last question here quickly. I was reading your dispatches mm -hmm. from, from the sentencing today. Jeff Berman, the U.S. attorney, commented on this as well in a statement afterward. Just paraphrase what he had to say about this, a congressman being convicted and sentenced for yeah, this. Yeah, basically, I mean, I, I think this really upset the U.S. attorney's office and, and upset the federal agents. I mean, not only did he lie to the FBI when he was confronted about it, as we, we just discussed, but the U.S. attorney's office essentially saying, look, when you have somebody who's charged with writing the laws, they are really held to a different standard, and they must obey those laws. And essentially, it was this hubris that, that U.S. Attorney Jeff Berman uh, really kind of went after here and said, look, you know, people need to know that nobody is above the law. That's kind of his main point here, and that it was the congressman's greed, mm. that, using his words, um, uh, that, uh, that really got him into trouble here. So I think these type of cases, when politicians come up, when politicians break the law this brazenly, and it was brazen, um, that really gets under the skin. Of, of people in law enforcement. They, they really look, look down on that. Tom, thank you very much. Thanks for the report. Of course, David. Tom Winter with me here in New York. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.